Okay, good morning, everybody. Greetings, welcome. This is Former Thrax, here to play some Night of the Dead. New game I'm enjoying quite a bit. Um, we're going to start fresh. We're going to do a new start. <clears throat> I've done enough experimenting on the uh, the current world to be fairly comfortable with the uh, gameplay elements and mechanics. And enough of the early game progression. I think we can uh, bump things up a bit. Uh, I need some more challenge. So we're going to uh, create a brand new character on harder difficulty and um, start fresh. So I'm hoping this weekend to get some multiplayer going. If with nobody else, with my friend Makeum, if I can get him uh, roped into the game um, and possibly set up a community server if there's enough interest. So let's see. Uh, things I learned. I did a little bit of research uh, last night and this morning. Um, and there's quite a bit in this game. A lot more than I thought there was. So I'm uh, more impressed the more I learn about it and the more I play it. It definitely has some polish issues and some jank, but um, what they've managed to cram into the game is uh, pretty interesting and pretty extensive. So I can uh, I can look past the lack of polish and the uh, fairly significant jank level and um, find the fun beneath the surface. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling here. Start game. This time, instead of taking the default Lucy character, I didn't realize there's actually a character creation option. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to create a custom character instead of working with the default Lucy. So let's go ahead and be a dude. Slightly darker. Oh, this is that's that's hair. Slightly darker dude. <laughs> uh, let's say, do we want to be blue hair? No, nah, let's not be blue hair. That's a little too much. Oh, uh, sure. That's fine. Uh, I, I don't really care about most of this stuff. So uh, there's quite a few options in here, though, if you want to, you know, get crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and have some of that and have a moustache. Yeah, there we go. Good enough. Next screen. Look at this. Look what I found. <laughs> we got occupation choices and traits. Positive and negative traits. So what I've learned is uh, we have points to spend. We have occupations, which are going to set preset our stats to certain configurations, as well as giving us one bonus option. So I'm going to pick marathon runner. You can see here, uh, whatever you pick, it uh, adjusts the stats and or gives you uh, traits of various kinds. Or you can go unemployed and just custom build your character however you'd like. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pick Marathon Runner. So we have Endurance, a little bit of Vitality and Strength, and uh, it gave us the Willpower trait. Give us Stamina Regeneration and a Movement Speed Boost. Then we're going to start picking some traits. Let's go with, let's see, Stamina Regen again. City Friendly gives bonus damage to trees, boulders, and ore. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, ranged weapon damage. Let's go ahead and take that. And, uh, speedster. Movement speed. That would be dodge, I would assume. Attack speed. XP gain. Let's take, uh, sharp nails. And we have two more points. We get anything for two? What, what do we want for two? Parry range. Stamina regen, hit point recovery from items. Let's take more stamina regen. Let's be all about the stamina and the movement with a little bit of crit improvement. So there's also negative traits. We could take negative traits like uh, lower XP. We're probably gain plenty of XP pretty quickly. So we could take that for uh, four points we could spend in addition. Um, we'll probably, if we keep playing, do some runs later with a lot of the negative traits or all negative traits even possibly uh, for the challenge. But for now, let's just go with this. And I'm going to bump up the difficulty in some other ways. So, former Thrax, create. There we go. All right, single player. Uh, let me, uh, I'm going to delete these earlier games. Doo -doo -doo. I'm going to leave the most recent one that I did just in case I need to jump into a game with a little bit of progress to test something. But otherwise, we will start here. We're going to go uh, change difficulty. 
All right. So previously I had it on normal. We just took the, the bare bones default normal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch it up to survival. We're not going to jump all the way to legend quite yet. Um, but for example, if we go to general here on normal difficulty, the zombies have 17% is the rating 17% difference between zero and a hundred. Um, doesn't mean they have 17% hit points necessarily. Well, maybe it does mean they have 17% hit points. I don't know, but whatever. That's where we were at currently with the settings for hit points. If we bump to survival and then go to that same section, we're jumping up to 37%. So it's a pretty significant change in the amount of damage we're going to need to do to take out the zombies. Um, so we'll test that. It might be too much for me in my, this early stage of my learning, um, but we'll see. But I think uh, that'll be a good intermediate spot to hit for a challenge. Um, so if we go back to uh, basic, I do want the waves. I don't need that. We do want respawns. Some of these are weird because it seems like they're backwards to me. So natural objects respawn. What, what would seem to me, if I clicked this, it would be saying, yes, I want that. But it seems to be the reverse. Because this, if I turn this on and say yes, I would expect it to be easier. But it's not. It's harder. So, this seems to be a turning off the respawn. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. It's weird. I have the same problem with a number of these options. It seems reverse of my expectation. But, whatever. We'll leave it on the part that makes it harder. So... Um, those are fine. I'm not going to fiddle with the settings there. We have to have move speed amounts, world zombie spawn amount. So this is one you can fiddle with if you want larger densities of zombies. So the world I was in felt a little light on the density. Um, what is it on normal? So it's on, it's at 54% here. We go back to normal. Holy crap. Wow. Wow, that's a big difference. This might be a lot harder than I was expecting. Hmm, because we're... It feels like we're doubling their hit points and doubling the amount of zombies in the world. Huh. Well, we'll give it a try. We might abandon it and dial back down again when I get thumped. <laughs> so... Well, let's go back to that. All right, leaving that alone. Uh, not messing with that. So it looks like it's a two-hour respawn time for the light zombies and then a 10-hour respawn time for heavy and giant zombies, which are like the bosses. Um, the wave zombie hit points is also bumped up. So the night wave uh, horde attack, they've got more hit points. You can also fiddle with the ratios for how many you're going to get. Hit points for animals and dam attack damage for animals is fine. Uh, I'm not going to turn those on. Research data is fine. XP amount. You can bump up the items and how much food you start. Wow, we only start with two pieces of food <laughs> instead of ten. That's going to be an immediate problem. Okay. And you can also set respawn times for... Um, for the objects. So that's where we would go here and we would turn on that and that, then go here and scroll down. Yeah, and you can set the respawn time for the objects. Huh. Maybe this just means you get the ability to adjust. It's not an on off thing. Uh, I'm not going to fiddle with that for now, though. Um, trap attack damage, resource production levels, that's all fine. And then some big ones over here. You can turn on hardcore mode, which is, you know, permadeath. Um, we, we'll, we may work our way to that eventually. Unlock all buildings is something you can do if you don't want to go through the prog quest progression to unlock buildings. Um, in my research, I found that... Access to uh, the building options and the workbenches and so on are gated through the quest system. And I hadn't been chasing the quest system. That's why I couldn't get the ranch and a few other things done. Uh, because I didn't continue. I, I stopped to investigate the Horde Knight stuff and the crafting benches and all that kind of stuff. So we need to keep pushing through the storyline stuff in order to unlock uh, further 
uh, options. And then you can also change the uh, the length of the day. Uh, I'm not going to fix any or fiddle with any of that right now, but it's good that they're here. So I got a much better understanding now of the various options in these menus and how they can adjust the gameplay. Um, but let's go with what we got. So pretty much just basic straights to survival. I don't think I fiddled with anything else. So let's jump in. I'm going to just mostly ignore the... I, I know the progression. I'm going to mostly ignore the uh, the text and chatter stuff. So how the run go yesterday? Went well. Went well. I don't think we died. I don't think I've died yet. Came close a couple times and learned a whole bunch. But now we're gonna we're gonna start playing a little more for real. Uh, now that I've learned a bit of the basics, and this weekend I'm gonna try to get a multiplayer server up for at least me and my friend Makem. And if anybody else in the community wants to join in, they're welcome. Oh, skip. Zombie dog treat time, huh? Let's get that done now. Let's see. There was stuff here we gotta grab. This is not a fresh human meat store, Mr. Zombie. I'm busy. So shuffle off to another store. A person? Are you currently in the underground capsule room on Andorna Island? Sleep capsules can sometimes cause trouble. I'm Dr. Veronica Grimes. I'm researching a zombie cure. Is there even power in the bunker now? Find a light immediately and secure the line of sight. I need your help with this. Oh, another thing I did was I changed the uh, controls so the tab opens my inventory. <laughs> I kept accidentally hitting tab constantly. So now I don't have to worry about it. Now it does what I want. I have a proposal for you. Please find the remaining mutant substance on Andorna Island. That material will be invaluable in my research for a zombie cure. Succeed, and I'll send a helicopter for your rescue. Make sure to record important things in your journal. The bunker you're in is the research facility where the new humanity project was conducted. Check if there's still someone in the bunker who can help you find the mutant substance. Finding. Thank God they can fast forward through that stuff. <laughs> I left the uh, the beard and the mustache the wrong color compared to the bright blonde hair. Oh well. We should head to the research center that Walter All right, well that doesn't take too long to jump in and out of the tutorial. You'll need to survive before you even think about finding the mutant substance. Understood? This I've is the best team of experts for assistance. Different location than Learn last by time. carefully following their instructions. We're to the north. Nice to meet you. My name is Sierra Wilder, a survival expert. From now on, I'll share all the survival knowledge I know with you. Let's start by loosening up your body. There are numerous resources required for survival. 
How about picking up noticeable small stones in the forest? Great. Now it's time to use that small stone to make a stone knife. Now, shall we gather some branches and leaves? Equip the stone knife you made, and when you cut the bushes, you should be able to get the materials you need. As the next step, we'll be crafting other tools necessary for survival. Shall we start by making an axe? Now let's gather some wood together. Trees are truly vital resources. They provide various hmm. materials. That is weird. Survival. Why am I on day two, hour ten? I don't remember any difficulty thing that had anything to do with, with the start time. Hmm. Another shoddy zombie game, how refreshing. Will point me to the high quality zombie game and I'll be happy to go play it. Because <laughs> I've already got probably thousands of hours in it. What do you consider a high quality zombie game versus a shoddy zombie game? Did my beer blondify? Oh, it did blondify. Why did it look weird in the other one? Huh. Odd. Compared to the last, I don't know, half dozen little project zombie games I've played in the last few months, I've been kind of touring the uh, the small project zombie games. This one's much, much higher uh, content-wise and quality-wise, I would also say, than pretty much all of them. This falls, I think, just slightly behind Seven Days to Die in terms of, uh, well, not slightly. In terms of polish, it's definitely behind. But Seven Days to Die also has had, like, what, 12 years of early access or 10 years or however god awful long it's been in early access. And a much larger budget and uh, development team. But this one, the more I learn about it, the more impressed I am with just how much content is in this one. So while it is a bit janky and asset store looking, um, the actual content and the way they've got it put together is impressing me a lot more than most of the other recent games. So, Infection Free Zone could count as original. I would like to disagree. <laughs> the only thing original about that is the usage of the real world maps. Otherwise, it matches lots of other games that have been around previously. And it's also a shoddy piece of junk uh, i'll wait another six months or a year before i look into that thing again that one i was not impressed with the more i played it the more unhappy i got with just how much of it didn't function Yeah, this one just had a uh, fairly substantive upgrade or update, and they're still targeting uh, middle of this year for the full 1.0 release. And it's been in early access about four years, three or four, something like that. So it's being steadily worked on with good substantive updates, which is a good thing. Now it's time to gather stones and minerals. With a pickaxe, the gathering will be much smoother. Yeah, I've played the Resident Evil games. The back-in-the-day versions. I haven't played anything recently. I don't even remember the last Resident Evil one I played. No idea. Those have more of a console origin. I'm not big into any of the console stuff. Or their PC crossovers. Or ports. Alright, uh, what are we up to? Uh, pickaxe. Do, 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 do. I gotta get used to hitting the uh, tab key again after half training myself out of it. Uh, 
Now let's use our crafted pickaxe to gather stones and minerals. If I really do need to airport, figure out this uh, plenty of rocks. day two hour like 11 thing. Rocks, you can easily obtain. One second, let me see if I can go find some information real quick. Hmm. I don't know. Anybody watching that actually knows what's going on with starting on day two, hour 11? Is that part of the difficulty adjustment? Let's do this. Let's make a save real quick. Uh, we'll go uh, N1 for new game one. And I'm going to return to the title screen. Let's uh let's go a new character. Don't care. Don't care. Oh, well I guess I do need a name. Single player. Change difficulty. Let's jump it up to legend and see what day it starts me on. Yep, there's tool degradation. It's a uh, it's a crafting building survival game. Got to have tool degradation. But it's very slow degradation. You get a ton of usage. Skip. Day 2 hour 11. Hmm. Okay, return to title. Do, do, do start game. Hey you, delete character. Yes. New character. Don't care. Single player. Change difficulty. Back to normal. It did show the time on the creation page. I wasn't watching. Do do do. do, do. I guess that's another uh, handicap to affect the difficulty. Come on. Day two, hour 11 again on a normal game. I started on a normal game previously and I was on Day one or whatever. So what's going on? That's weird. Hmm. Goodbye, blonde Vormithrax. So what did we pick? Marathon runner, uh, stamina regen, ranged weapon damage. Speedster and critical rate. All right, so you're telling me, why does it say game day two? Oh, that's the date for my saves. It's the date that I'm on for my saves. So why am I starting on these later days 
or <laughs> I don't get this. This is weird. This seems like a bug. There's no time start option anywhere in these these menus. Huh. Well, I'm not trying to start a world file that's uh, in progress. I'm hitting new game. I'm not trying to do saved game. Or maybe I am. Maybe I'm picking these and then changing the difficulty and then loading in with a different character. I think that is what... No, I think that is what I'm doing. I think what's happening is I'm picking a new character, entering the same world. Uh, yeah, so the, the characters and the world saves are separate. They're, they're unique setups. So I'm taking a new character into my existing time-progressed world. So that's what's going on. All right, so I need to make sure I hit the buttons in the right order. So you, single player, yes. I'm not picking any of those. We're going to go new game, which should bring me to yes. All right, so that's what was happening. It's answered. <laughs> Figured it out. All right, so uh, survival, and I didn't change anything off the survival options. We're just bumping up a couple of notches. All right, now we should be good. Yeah, there are certain things about the crafting survival genre that can be very annoying. I don't consider tool degradation that big a deal, depending on how fast it occurs and how easy it is to get rid of. And in this game, it's simply a matter of having some tool repair kits with you. And it's just click once and your, your tool's back to full strength. And it lasts a long time. Even the early tools do. Um, so the degradation is very minimal in this one. And then, of course, the smart asses always go, well, if it's minimal, why bother even having it? Blah, 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 blah. And then you just roll your eyes and walk away because they're just there to have an argument. <clears throat> See, the, the beard doesn't match again. <laughs> it, it's not blonde in here, damn it. It doesn't look blonde in the slightest. Whatever. Um. All right. Day zero, hour 10. That's perfectly fine. All right. Do to do to do. Yeah, strap that belt on. This is not a fresh human meat store, Mr. Oh. Zombie. I'm busy. So shuffle off to another store. A person? Are you currently in the underground capsule room on Andorna Island? Sleep capsules can sometimes cause trouble. I'm Dr. Veronica Grimes. I'm researching a zombie cure. Go on, Dr. Grimes. Get moving. Is there even power in the bunker now? Find a light immediately and secure the line of sight. Oh yeah. Uh my uh, the other one of the other questions I had when I was playing yesterday was I couldn't figure out where my coil stuff was coming from. We have this coil screen and we had a bunch of coils like now we have these coils. I have a proposal for you. Where they're coming from is the uh, equipment. Find the remaining mutant substance on Andorna Island. That so material will Clothing be has coil slots. For a zombie cure. Succeed and I'll send a helicopter for your rescue. Make sure to record important things in your journal. So yeah, clothing has the coils automatically in them when you loot them. So that one's got a lightning coil, a lightning coil, and a lightning coil. One each. So now we have three lightning coils. We need five in order to get the lightning thing to, uh, to trigger. Uh, but that's where they were coming from. I couldn't figure out why I was getting these coils. And I hadn't noticed that uh, clothing items have the coils and identical items you loot could have different coil quantities and arrangements. So I had some leather jackets, exact same jacket, same level and everything, but the coils were different on them. So you can pick and choose between your clothing items to get the coil counts that you want to trigger the various abilities. And then you can add coils and construct coils to that bench that we eventually built. 
uh, that I hadn't quite got to. But that, that was the mystery. That's where the coils were coming from. <laughs> Which is fine. It adds uh, more player uh, character options for uh, build strategies. Okay, uh, journal, open door. Oops, read the book first. Then, journal, and open door. The bunker you're in is the research facility where the new humanity project was conducted. Check if there's still someone in the bunker who can help you find the mutant substance. We should head to the research center that Walter meant. All right. Now we can get to playing proper. You'll need to survive before you even think about finding the mutant substance. Understood? I've assembled the best team of experts for assistance. Learn by carefully following their instructions. Nice to meet you. My name is Sierra Wilder, a survival expert. From now on, I'll share all the survival knowledge I know with you. Let's start by loosening up your body. There are numerous resources required for survival. How about picking up noticeable small stones in the forest? Oops. Oops. Great. Now it's time to use that small stone to make a stone <laughs> knife. I already did. I did done it already. Now, shall we gather some branches and leaves? Equip the stone knife you made, and when you cut the bushes, you should be able to get the materials you need. As the next step, we'll be crafting other tools necessary for survival. Shall we start by making an axe? Now let's gather some wood together. Trees are truly vital resources. So the they provide various materials essential for survival. Yeah, yeah. So there's a green bar to the left side of my hot bar for each item. That's the durability bar. I don't think you can see the info anywhere else. I don't think even pointing at the item, you can see the green bar right here, but it doesn't actually say anywhere in the info screen what the current durability is. The bar is the only indicator that I've been able to find. So we got a different starting location than we had last time. Uh, my research yielded the knowledge that there is, we'll get a, a compass point, a map point here eventually, but there is a kind of a central city here in this middle grasslands uh, zone or area. And there's five, either five or six starting locations kind of ranged in a circle around that starting area. So you start in one of these random locations and then you, it'll always point you into that town in the lab and then you kind of follow a sequence. <clears throat> yes. Level two. Ah! 
We're going to have to make the decision, depending on how quickly we can move through things, of okay. whether or not now I'm going to try to push through. With a pickaxe, the gathering will be much smoother. Whether I'm going to push through uh, as much of the storyline as I can initially, or uh, stop somewhere and set up a temporary base for that first night's uh, horde attack. Now let's use our crafted pickaxe to gather stones and minerals. If you look around carefully, you'll see plenty of rocks. By breaking those rocks, you can easily obtain stones. Shall we also look for ore? Ore is slightly shiny compared to regular rocks. Look for rocks with a black shine to find it. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab all the ore. Oops. We're going to need lots of it. Might as well grab it now. This should get us enough for our initial needs. <clears throat> I want to get the bow crafted and start killing zombies so I can see just how much of a difference bumping up two levels difficulty makes. We're going to try to specialize in uh, movement and uh, archery. I hate when the hitbox kind of moves. One more boulder. Yes. <laughs> Come on. You're winged. All right. Who begins hey, our wake up on a hunger journey? And feel like you're left alone? I'm Jamal Price, the mechanic. There are plenty of ways to get stronger. Crafting some high-end gear, upgrading what you've got, or advancing through tech research. So, let's kick things off with that. Just set it up wherever, no need to overthink this one. All right, we'll get the bench set up. Uh, I know it won't be up for very long. We'll put it up, do the things they want, take it back down again, and then get moving. Build. Production. Equipment workbench. Don't care. The crafting bench is pretty handy, you know. Great for making and breaking down gear. All right, for starters, how about we whip up a pipe on that bench? I got your back. Next. I'm more of an up-close and personal kind of guy, but you. Looks like you could use some long-range firepower. Try crafting a bow at the bench. You can't just have a bow and no arrows, right? You'll need some arrows.
What are we missing? More rocks or... Nope, it's branches. It. Equip that bow of yours and shoot an arrow towards our lovely crafting bench. If the arrow yes. sticks into the bench, you can pull it out and use it again. Yeah, we'll get that in a second. I need some more arrows. Stealth archer build? I don't know how stealthy it'll be, but it'll be a able to run away and then keep shooting archer build. So we're going high mana or high stamina regen, high movement speed, so I can shoot and scoot, shoot and scoot, shoot and scoot. We'll carry a boatload of arrows. And we'll just be smashing out the uh, arrows as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. All right. That going, uh, yes. So, where to next? Oh, wait a sec. Don't just leave that crafting bench behind. That's a waste of good resources. To dismantle it, you'll need a hammer. Once you've got that hammer equipped, there's a bunch you can do with it. Hold that hammer and give our worn out crafting bench some TLC. Equip that hammer and head over to the crafting bench to start the dismantling. You'll recover some of the materials you used on it, so it's all good. Listen up, soldier. I am Captain Axton Hawkins. Obey my commands and learn the skills to survive on the battlefield. As you advance along the front lines, you'll inevitably face the zombies. When the time arrives, utilize the skills you've acquired to strike and evade at the appropriate times. Safely defeat the zombies. Got it? Tree keeps dodging. All right, a few more trees and then uh, some more iron nodes or barrels, and I'll get some more arrows put together. We'll be all set, and we can start rocking and rolling. I need to go kick a zombie. I got no items out of that.
Okay. Seventy five, that's a good number. Now we can get moving. Where are you at, zombies? There's one. Ooh. Got a big one? No. Too high. That's quite a few arrows. What? Yes. What the hell? <laughs> it's flying off to the left of where I'm aiming. What the? Okay. Every single shot has been left of where I'm aiming a fair amount. What is going on? <laughs> I don't want to have to adjust that far. Stabbing attacks are effective in narrow combat areas like inside buildings. Equip a melee weapon, aim at the enemy, and then attack with a stab. However, be careful when using a blunt weapon like a pipe, as the stabbing damage is weak. That is definitely more uh, hit points on the enemies. Hmm. Um. They want uh, pipe. Oh, the stupid pipe aim and stab. <laughs> pipe is already equipped. Move on. Ah, greetings. The name's Gilbert Foster. I've been assigned to guide you in building your survival base. A survival base isn't just a refuge, it can be the heart of various crafting activities. And it all starts with a solid foundation. That's a little more like it. Build a foundation, huh? Not quite. Whoops. Oh, that doesn't that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. Let's use some of that stamina. Oh yeah. Hunger, hunger, hunger. You must have noticed your satiety depleting. As your satiety decreases, your maximum health and stamina also shrink putting you at a disadvantage for survival. To restore satiety, you need to eat. So those guys I learned are the screamers. Hmm. All right, that's too much here for me. Uh, yeah, those guys that I couldn't figure out what their point was, they're, uh, they're the screamers. Those guys with the, uh, the bar across their shoulders. They just yell and, uh, attract other zombies from nearby. Hmm. Way too much missing going on. off but he's still moving yes. 
guys have so many more hit points. Uh, crap. Where'd the other dude die? Body disappears a little too fast. Now I don't know where my arrows are that I pumped into him. Get out of my face, stupid pipe. Uh, and... Oh, there they are. All right. Uh, I haven't used the spear a lot. We use it a little bit, but I don't have a spear currently, and I don't like the javelin. So we're not doing the javelin. Um, Do we have our quest? We don't have our quest location yet. Why do we not have our quest location yet? Main story. I got to learn the basic survival stuff first. All right. Fine. Let's come back up here for a second. Probably somebody in that house, but whatever. Build. Station. How about expanding the energy bar painkiller? First, as before, select the foundation in the construction window and build. Then, when you can see the blueprint of the foundation, turn on the snap function during construction. Uh, what did I miss? Hmm. Why is this one still showing as something active? Weird. you're following along splendidly when oh constructing buildings remember you have the option to adjust the height uh oh they disappeared my hot bar again <laughs> damn it uh... Next, let's install some stairs to reach the higher levels of your foundation. By using the building rotation feature, you should be able to attach the stairs to the foundation. A little tip. During construction, if you check the bottom section, you'll find various handy features displayed. With it, you can transform logs into processed materials like wooden planks. Now, I recommend you construct a crafting bench and start processing your wood. Mm. Don't have the parts. This is very close to seven days to die. Closest game I've seen yet. And it's way more complicated and deep than what you're seeing so far. There is a lot more to the game. The more I learn about it, the more impressed I've become. Doesn't have quite the polish that uh, seven days that I have, but it also doesn't have the length of time and early access. 
and uh, the budget. All right, material production workbench. The crafting bench allows you to process a wide array of resources. However, to unlock these features, you'll need to upgrade the crafting bench first. Now grab your hammer, upgrade the crafting bench, and take a stab at stone processing. Goddamn branches. We need branches for everything. Oh yeah, it's early access, been early access for, I think, four years. But it's due for full 1.0 release uh, mid, a li little further this year. There's only a few more major updates on the roadmap. Yeah, this one isn't new. I've been following it for years now. It's been on my list to eventually visit. It seemed far enough along now that... Uh, it was time. All right, bricks. All right, come on, get me out of this stuff. Processing ores is nope. a vital step. <laughs> Damn it. Especially the variety of materials derived from ores are essential for fortifying your survival base and crafting various tools and weapons. Two iron ingots, one copper wire. Creating things by hand is both satisfying and enjoyable, wouldn't you agree? Feeling uncertain. There's no need to worry. The item crafting bench has got your back. Guess what I'm missing? Guess ya. Guess, guess. Give you one guess. Either undead yeti. God, I hope they're not going to put me through all of these. I don't remember how far the uh, chain goes in learning how to do this stuff. Nails and rope. Uh, of course, I'm now out of iron. And I haven't gathered enough cloth. Son of a... I still need to know why they haven't... Sh why the, um, the next area is not on my map. I don't want to go through every goddamn workbench before I get to that. I want to get moving. Um, ha! 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 Ah, come on. Ha! Find the magic spot. Level five? Hmm, alrighty. 
I don't remember from our first run what the requirements were. Uh, we're going to need more, I think. Two more rope. Okay. I imagine you must be quite worn out from the relentless struggle to survive. You know, to soothe that weary body of yours, how about setting up a sleeping bag? It could provide a wonderful spot to rest and momentarily rejuvenate your weary body. Uh, is that the bench I didn't make yet, or that I took down and didn't put back up? <laughs> What are we short on? More iron, of course. Uh, better not destroy anything quite yet. Huh. Gonna wake up half a dozen zombies. Stamina. Food's going to be a problem pretty quick. I'm not spending any time getting any food right now. We don't start with much on this difficulty. Level up. Well, it seems you're fairly prepared now. With this level of readiness, you stand a fighting chance while searching for the mutant substance. Let's move to the research center Walter mentioned. Open the map to check your location and start moving. Um, apparently not. Hmm. I am... Oh, that's right. It is a structure. It's a uh, furniture right there. Five cloth. All right, five cloth. But we're going to tear all this stuff down and get moving, so...
All right, we'll pick up cloth while we run. Uh, character sheet. Let's go with uh, noise, move, speed. Mr. to zombies. To uh, stamina, attention, vitality, and Alright, still no coil bonuses. Inventory. Sort. Um, yeah, we need to get some food. Keep picking up mushrooms. I think I've got everything I want here. Alright. These clothes, I mean, why would I care? Oh, okay, here we go. Research center. But why would I care? I have no interest whatsoever in cosmetic stuff. I don't do trophies. I don't do mounted anything. I don't care. If it's not functional, it doesn't interest me. God damn it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Did I watch where Birdo flew off to before I went and grabbed those? Oop. All right, up that way. Guess it's on my compass, so yes, up that way.
Have you arrived at the research center? Check the experiment log at the desk on the first floor. Let's see if Walter's words are true. Uh oh. Mm, let's see. Handmade herbal medicine bandage. Oops, I probably used up something I needed. Uh, arrows. No, better hold on to those. I'm not sure what the intestines are for. I'm going to skirt around the lab. We're going to go set up where I set up previously. Get a some uh, storage boxes, if nothing else. All right, Bunny, stop hopping. Bunny, stop moving. <laughs> Damn it. One of them. a lot of zombies um Careful. Oops. After people disappeared, animals roam the streets freely. It's time to remind those animals who's at the top of the ecological pyramid. Not only are animals an excellent source of protein, but they also provide various valuable materials. Great. It seems we have prepared a decent amount of food ingredients. Shall we start with a simple dish that even beginners can easily make? Let's begin with a simple mushroom and fruit saute.
All right. Uh, hmm. Let's, I think, just set up here and we'll do our main fighting area over there. I need nails. Uh oh, crap. Why does that guy look like he's going to run all the way over here? <laughs> he is absolutely going to run all the way over here. I feel like uh, Monty Python. Drum roll. Charging across the field. What is that? Two nails? Get me at least started. Good enough for the moment. Um, so five more nails, two wooden planks. Need the other bench. Oh yeah, I better get a sleeping bag down too. <laughs> it's gonna be a bummer if I don't get a sleeping bag down. Ah, crap, out of cloth again. I knew I shouldn't have used cloth for that one thing I did. Bad Vormatrex, bad. All right. I have to be really cautious till I can get some more cloth. <laughs> Come on.
Stupid bunny is a schizophrenic. Isn't this game dead? Uh, no, it is not dead. I don't know what that means. Getting regular updates on schedule for its full release here in a few months or later this year. I need to get some paper, but I don't want to go near the buildings. Hmm. Big guy. I mean cloth. I need cloth. There's too many guys moving over there. I should probably just keep cleaning up near the uh, the research facility. If we have to clean that up anyway. Not sure the screamer will draw too many. Screamer's coming. Don't know how far away these guys draw from. expose their weaknesses by attacking the weakness at the exact moment with a kick or stab you can temporarily disable the enemy especially when attacking an enemy's weakness with a kick combos build up As combos build up the damage from kicks gets stronger so make active use of kick combos to overpower the enemy in one go if your weapon durability goes down Every swing, every shot won't pack the same punch. So to keep your weapon in top form, it's gonna need some repairs, right? Think of the equipment repair kit as your weapon's BFF. With it, you can make that worn out weapon feel brand new. I have so many more hit points now. That's too many.
I really need somebody to die. Really soon. <laughs> These guys are too fast. Feel free to go down. There's a lot of headshots. I got 13 arrows left. That was kind of weird. They were way faster and seemed tougher than usual. I don't know if that was a daytime mini horde. There are daytime mini hordes they send at you in addition to the nighttime horde. And I'm getting pretty behind schedule. I'm not sure I'm going to survive the nighttime. Uh, hey, we're up to... Oh, that's research data. Damn. I only got two cloths still. getting kind of ridiculous um i mean i like challenge but these guys are feeling way too bullet spongy it's just ridiculous having 30 arrows in a guy's face and these are just low level zombies i might save out and then back the difficulty down or just adjust their hit points down because this is this is a little nuts I just want my cloth so I can make my damn sleeping bag <laughs> and then I can get on with my other business. Um, I know there's going to be cloth down the road. I think we've cleared out most of what's up here. Son of a... God damn, where are these guys coming from? I wonder if this is another part of the difficulty upgrade. Constant day swarms coming at me. Any other time, there's tons of little boxes along the road where I can get the uh, cloth. Tapped for right now. falls on his face. Hmm. 
Maybe I should go for leg shots. That's a spitter. I hear the chirping of birds. While birds are small and cute, they provide essential protein for survival. Yeah, these things are just too bullet spongy. I had a lot more arrows in him than that. There they are. <laughs> hey! Got enough. Alright. Of course I'm gonna need more for other things, but well, let's go back, drop the sleeping bag, and I'm gonna re go review the settings I have it on. This is just way too bullet spongy for me. Alright. Uh, I don't have a lot of space up here either, but Revival point set. All right, let's make a save. All right, so uh, in the first game I did to learn the basics, in my first look, we were on normal difficulty. For this one, I bumped it to uh, survival difficulty. So we went from normal up to survival, and it changed quite a few things. Um, I think, I think, I think I might bump back down to normal until we get further into the game. So I haven't learned yet the efficiencies and how to min-max things to be able to handle this kind of difficulty and slow down in the progression. So I think we'll go back to normal and we'll speed through as much as possible this early game stuff we've seen. Yeah, let's make the adjustment. Then I'll have to go adjust the uh, the title of the uh, the series <laughs> or the description anyway, since we're not going to be on survival difficulty anymore. Good experiment, though, gives me an idea of what the progression does. I could go in and just specifically keep everything else and specifically lower like the hit points of the enemies just to make them a little less bullet spongy, but keep all the other things that changed. But I don't want to fiddle with all that right now. Hey, big bird, come come back, land over here. All right, so it's already hour 16. We got eight hours, eight hours, and the, uh, the nighttime shenanigans are gonna start. We got just a couple of the boards up. I need to get a larger platform put together. Um, I need to get another storage box. Uh, so I need wooden planks for that. We don't have 
Yeah, we don't have the uh, the bench down that'll give us that. So we need material production. Wooden planks. All right, that'll be enough for the moment. We'll throw odds and ends in here. Because I need to turn into leather. Need one more for food items. Also need to get the uh, campfire up as quick as possible, but I need to get more platforms down first. Yeah, I can get a pretty good number of these down. Let's expand this thing. Now, of course, I got, I want to move everything. I should have done this first. <laughs> um, let's do one more set. That is what? Three by four? Two, three, yeah, four. Um... I'm almost out of logs. Huh. All stone and some branches. I'm gonna get the campfire up, then we can cook some of the food. I do appreciate games that let you uh, adjust your settings on the fly so you can find your own version of fun. I'm gonna need to chop a lot of trees. We need to get uh, it set up for the nighttime. Only seven hours to go. Time's gonna fly. Cooking first, though. Trying not to eat the apples and eggs and uh, mushrooms because there's meals we can prepare that give us bonuses. I don't remember exactly what the recipes were. Really need to get something to eat. <laughs> Having uh, health and stamina capped by your food, your satiety level. Kind of interesting. All right, let's see if we can get the campfire put up. Oh, 
boiled eggs, roasted small meat. What are we missing? Oh, herbs. I've actually got quite a bit of those, so if I can go get six herbs, we can get six of that put together. Well, I don't need six of that. It's only 48k, Cal. All right, let's get that done, that done. Then we'll grab some herbs for some of the other stuff. I think I'll go ahead and cook the egg. I'm going to need more food to get me through the night. So we still got to get that done. Um, now that we're not the rest. So I figured out what this does. It heals you. If you see my if red bar on the bottom left. You lose all your health, you won't have the strength to flee anymore. At that moment, you'll need to move to a safe place to avoid being killed and having all your flesh torn off by the zombies. Well, my flesh torn off. Setting a respawn point will allow you to move to a safe location, even in such dire circumstances. All right, now that we're not constrained by that tiny stamina bar, we'll clear some local forest, and I want to get my first night setup going. I forget what I'm going to have access to. What traps do we have? Um, oh, we do have the pendulum. All right. The problem's going to be I won't have the materials to get the trap machine going. Get these fancy things built, I think. We'll be stuck with the uh, really early stuff. I'll take a look after we get a little bit more put together. Well, let me take me long to get at least the same thing we did last time put together if we have to go that route. Another benefit to chopping down lots of trees is you sometimes get apples. I also have to decide how much infrastructure I want to put here. But ideally, I'd like to just finish clearing the lab and then move straight on to uh, the hospital and then further. I don't know where we're going to set up a quote-unquote final base, but I don't think it should be right here in Newbie Land. Thing it's not Valheim. That's a pretty tough tree. Ha! 
I should probably learn to do is cheese the first night's board. I think you can set up on like the roof of a building and then set traps down below to clear out the zombies during the horde waves. I love how using the knife is so, so draining of stamina. <laughs> it's so crazy draining. It's tougher using the knife than it is the uh, fire axe. The island. It means there are carnivores that prey on them. Of course, carnivores can be dangerous, but if you hunt the larger ones, you can get bigger rewards. How about taking on the challenge of hunting wolves? All right. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot to grab herbs. Where are the herbs? How many herb plants around here? Thought it was. Yep, there's the herb. Efficiency drops when working in the dark. It's better for one's mental well-being to be in a well-lit environment rather than in the dark. Let's install some fire lighting to make your living space bright and warm. <laughs> Love to. Might not get to it. Well, we backed the uh, the difficulty down. It doesn't take a huge amount. We killed at least one wolf earlier in the uh, previous run. Uh-oh. Repair my bow.
Okay, now what can we get done? Food is not just for filling our stomachs. It can also give our bodies special effects. Thanks to the refreshing taste of the mushroom and fruit saute, one can feel lighter and more energetic, resulting in faster Not a good movement. place for you. <laughs> Interferes with my interacting with the box. When night falls, numerous zombies will run towards you. If you are surrounded by them, you will lose your life. If there is a safe place that zombies cannot reach, you can prevent such an incident. So try building a spiked watchtower at the base, and if a dangerous situation arises, make sure to climb up to the watchtower. Mm. Okay. Um, let's start getting dark. 1800. Oh, you absolutely can't take on a horde in melee or even in ranged combat. There will literally be 200 zombies. <laughs> 200! Not all at once, but 200 over the uh, course of the nighttime wave attacks. Um, Let's see. I need... I need stuff and I need things. Need to repair that. So I need a repair kit. Forget where that's made. Right there. So I need plastic and cloth. We're out of cloth again. Only one tape, huh? Hey, tape. Yeah, stuff and stuff. Yep. Yeah, I should have moved things around. Three more bricks, huh? All right, so we're up to... Now we're up to metal crafting. Branches out of vines, really? Hmm. Didn't notice that last time. Give me a shield. It seems you've acquired a shield, soldier. If you block an enemy strike accurately with a shield, you get an opportunity to counterattack. But if you rely on the shield indiscriminately, your posture will collapse, 
putting you at risk. Therefore, it's paramount to constantly monitor and manage your guard stamina. The infantry looks low on space. Using storage, you can organize unnecessary items and free up space. Additionally, you can directly use items from any storage within a 50 minute radius during construction, crafting, research, and trap reloading. Okay. Hey, I think engineering graduate would get up there. So I need to go clear that before I can do too much more here. So they're not going to let me do, well, they are, or no, uh, that's the repair kit. Yeah, I can't do trap machine until we do that. So let's get up there and see if we can grab it. Um, go ahead and have our food, give us the buff. The flavor and nutrition of meat are elements we need even in a survival environment. To make a truly delicious meat dish, fresh meat is a must. Let's search for fresh meat for our delicious meat dish. Is the storage box insufficient? How about thinking of a solution? By upgrading the storage box, you can increase its capacity, making it more efficient to use. Then try upgrading the storage box. You gotta go. While exploring unknown territories, it's common to get lost. There are times when you can't remember where the important places were. Flags can solve such problems. Ah, one cloth short. Great. Oh, crap. We got loot. What do we get? Leather gloves. I forget what rarity that one is. That is rare. Protection, max hit points, and it's got three lightning coils. That might be enough. Is that enough? Oh, it's not enough. We have five lightning coil, but we need five attention. That number. Now we have lightning. Awesome. At the engineering book, lab record. It seems Walter wasn't lying. According to the experiment log, there's a storage for the mutant substance on the second floor. The new humanity project was led by the extraordinary Ooh. Dr. Cleon. I gained a lot of knowledge through Dr. Cleon's writings. It's hard to believe that his project turned the world into this. 
Still got our lightning. Forgot to get my shield set up. First swing. Whoa. Shut up. stuff. Ammunition. All right, it's multiple guys in there. Multiple guys here too, if I remember. Yep, here they come. Hello. Not good.
Hey, third guy. At least three, maybe more. You've already leveled up quite a bit. When you earn experience and level up, you gain an ability point. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Using that point, you can enhance various abilities in the character info window. Rude. Stand up, buddy. I think I might be running out of arrows again. Need a wrench to open a refrigerator. Hey. I think that's the first time I've seen somebody captured like that. Whoop. Not for long. Running out of time. <laughs> Full set. This is where, what's his name is? I gotta go check this first. The mutant substance is broken. It seems we won't be able to find the mutant substance in this lab. Fortunately, according to the experiment log, there's a record of Walter agreeing to deliver the mutant substance to Dr. David. Let's ask Walter about this, who is hiding in the server room. Baseball science, art of war. Mm. 
One slot left. The mutant. Nope. Walter's tone makes it hard to trust him. But for now, we have no choice but to follow Walter. Hopefully, this time there will actually be some mutant substance. Uh oh. Well. Let's see. Uh, crap. I'm gonna have to run all the way about out and back again. I'll drop that. Care about one sole brick. We can eat the chicken. Those two we can equip. I think we're done. I don't think we got the engineering book like I expected. I thought it was in here somewhere. Key again. Went the wrong direction. Definitely going to need to upgrade. Well, that's a little better. Look at that. That's quite the upgrade. All right. I don't imagine any of this is going to be superior to what I'm wearing. Darkness is starting to fall. I know. Zombies will start swarming around midnight. Ah. We must have our defenses up before then. <laughs> the simplest defensive structure we can build is the spiked fence. When surrounded and endangered by zombies, lure them to the spiked fence for elimination. Got that, soldier? Got it. Hmm. 
All right, we got arrows. Bow's been repaired uh, mostly. And I got one more repair kit. I got three repair kits. We're okay there. Uh, I don't have a lot of painkillers. Cooling water. Lubricant. Need to get some more upgrades done, but I don't have time to go gather resources. 22 iron ore. Uh, only seven pieces of iron left. And wooden planks, lumber, log. All right, I got to get something started no matter what. Go higher. Oh God, this is going to be another one of those. No, not sure why it looked like it wasn't going to work. Hey, what are you doing over there, dude? Must have got a critical hit on that one. I'm thinking I don't actually need that many. If I do what I did last time, I only need a couple of these to stand on. I guess three is enough. I'll try to keep it really simple. If I keep it shorter, I won't have to do as much running around as I did last time. All right, uh, let's just go. This time we'll make sure we cover these side entrances. Uh-oh. What am I out of? I'm out of lumber. Let's go get some more logs real quick. I think what I'll do is I'll go with the uh, side entrance jumping pad and then um, stack the uh, stairs with layers of these little spikes. I think that'll be a little easier. One branch and two logs out of all of that. Ha. All right, that's only four more of those. I need more than that.
All right, more trees. We'll do the same thing the other side, and then I'll just put one platform with a stair here, and I'll just be able to hop back and forth as needed so I can get back up there while they kill themselves. Actually, ah, oh, damn it. I shouldn't... Probably shouldn't have even done this one. They're going to approach from that direction almost every time. That's fine. No big deal. We should have time to get it done. Getting one lamp up would be good too, if we, if we can manage it. Die tree, jeez. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Yeesh. What is up with you? <laughs> One swing away. Two logs and two branches and some leaves. Oh man, that one took a lot of swinging. Feels like my axe is doing less damage with the durability getting so low. Need to actually check that. 20 damage. I think that's I think that's lower. Can't remember. Nope. I don't know. Just seems like it does less damage. Have you properly prepared our defenses against the zombies' onslaught? You can never have enough when it comes to defense. Construct the secondary defenses immediately. Understood, soldier? Yep. Got it. One more. Ran out of parts, damn it. Stupid branches. Yes. 
Rabbits generally symbolize peace. But have you heard of the exception? There are rumors of a rabbit that has become aggressive and attacks humans first. It's the mutated rabbit. This rabbit is much more powerful than a regular rabbit. But if you can catch it successfully, you can expect a great reward. Uh, it should be more than enough, I think. Um, do a platform. Yeah. All right, that should be all I need. We'll mostly just let them kill themselves on the spikes. As needed, I'll hop off the platform, or if I fall off or get knocked off or whatever, we'll run around here, get back on the platform so they'll path into the spikes, and we'll just let the spikes do 99% of the damage. All right, so that should get us through the night. What a mess. Huh. Hmm. All right, so uh, we should have a bunch of research papers after we clear out everybody during the uh, the invasion. Uh, we're going to need to get the research table up there. We'll do this now. <laughs> Give it a good kick. Progress zero out of 156, zero research data. Why are you not registered? Yeah, I'm not going to bother with only 47. All right, so table's ready to go. We'll research in the morning. Ah, uh, what else? So, got the equipment, oil yet, material we got, crafting workbench we got, kitchen we got, research we got, make things go away we don't need immediately, skin bench I don't care about, and not doing traps or farming yet. So, I think we got everything up, just got to finish doing a few upgrades when we have the basics. Um, upgrading the boxes would be good. Light. Oh yeah, I wanted to get at least one lamp out. So one more piece of lumber. Or eh, maybe two. Oh, I can only make one. Should be enough. Huh. Yes. All right, so we got light. Um, hopefully they don't all come running directly through my base here, but I think they will because they like to approach from that direction. <laughs> we'll see how much they get stuck on this arrangement.
Yeah, ideally this should be back behind that assembly because they don't approach from that direction, so they would never get hung up on here. Oh well. Don't care for this one. Um, what else? I have food for the evening. We are... Oof. I got my two roasted meat, and that's pretty much it. My two cans of beans. Should be enough. Like it's getting lighter out. Hey, Moon. You brightening the place up? Or is it just because I got that lantern over there? All right. Uh, handmade. What else do I need to worry about? Go ahead and let's not craft all the herbs. Not use all my cloth. Um, stat points. So five and five. I think I'm just going to hold the other two for now. We got good coil compared to last time so far. Can't make a spear yet. In your blacksmith. Can't do anything else with that till we get a wrench. Can't upgrade that. I'm running out of time, soldier. The zombies will be here soon. Make sure you have a solid line of defense. A well-planned kill zone will significantly increase your chances of survival. Yeah, I haven't tried the fishing stuff yet. <laughs> My calorie cookie and a carrot. Cooking oil, garlic, potatoes, and onions. I haven't seen a single one of any of those things. That stuff you can only grow yourself? Not, not findable? Eh, at least we got our inventory clear. Hopefully we get enough research papers during the moon or the uh, the horde. But we can pick up novice porter, get us uh, 12 more inventory slots. We won't be able to do that one. 
we'll be missing a special item for it, but uh, we should be get a, quite a few of the upgrades, hopefully. All right. Uh, dude. Still doesn't max me out. It's hard to find food at night, too. I don't want to go too far from the base because we're going to be kicking off the uh, the Horde Moon here pretty soon. There were some bunny rabbits over here earlier. I see no movement. Yeah, we're all set. We're just waiting for it to kick off. I hear birdies. Where are you, birdies? A terrible time to be hunting small game. Oop, right there. Couple of zombies over there. You know what these are made of plastic and nail. Paper, one nail or two nails. Plastic and nails. And more plastic and nails, all right, that's fine. All right, we better head back.
plus two. Out of pieces of iron. All right, come on, Horde Knight, kick off. Uh, whoops. Did not get my bed remade. <laughs> Yeah, everything takes the trap machine. Take a nap right before it kicks off. Huh. All right. Last couple we'd seen of this in this same spot, they tended to come from that way. They're going to run right through my base trying to get to me. And then they also came from that way after the thing started. wonder how far away they generate before they start running. If they try to do it out of the visual range of the player. <laughs> they don't just pop in. Here they are. First one, anyway. Where's the rest of your buddies? It can't just be you. No, see, that's not cool. <laughs> that's very much not cool. Oh man, that sucks. They're still just coming right through the corner. Get back on the spikes. Knowing how to exploit the weaknesses of zombies can make combat much easier. Always remember, zombies' primary weak point is infection. Practice use the bull to precisely target the enemy.
I wonder if there'll still path to me from over there if I stand down here. Looks like it. Yeah, building the backside of it was useless. <laughs> kind of hesitated after I finished it going, wait a minute, I'm probably not going to end up using that. Last time I ran back and forth and kind of lured them onto the spikes. But I'm finding the kick kick method works really well. <laughs> not much to worry about. Wow. Is that a spinning roundhouse? Not up to 200 dead yet. I like this corner for some reason. It'll path under and then hook around. <laughs>
think I'm only actually using about three of the spikes for 99% of this. Too bad I don't get XP for the trap kills. Whoa, whoa, no, no. Get back down. Get back down. Standard size zombies are called light zombies. Head to the front lines to hunt down those light zombies. He just dialed up several notches. Another pretty big wave coming.
Ooh, big crowd. Gotta be getting close. Uh oh, another one of the big guys. That it? I think this might be the last guy. Ah, survived the first night. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Ah, right, well now we know how to handle the first night. Basically just do two platforms, one ramp, and a bunch of these. And then not really worry about it. If I have to get back up on there, we'll just, uh, you know, do that. Actually, I think I can get there doing this. Yeah, so I don't need any of that. I don't need that. So lesson learned. We can set this up real quick and easy. Assuming the same difficulty level. Kind of fun doing the whole kick shoot thing. And uh, even a little bit of damage to him from the spikes and a single shot from the bow. I was making some pretty good XP towards the end there when I finally started fighting. Okay. Thank God for this. Oh, really? How did you get in here? <laughs> when did a bird fly in? Give me the other errant arrows I have out here. All right. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So, how many did we get? Not quite 300, so we got about 250 or so. We definitely want Porter. Gets us an extra 12 inventory slots. Then we're stuck because we need this calisthenics book. Uh, let's see. Building. I'm not overly worried about building speed. Demolish would be good because we get more materials back. Well, let's make sure we get the other stuff. Trap machine. Engineering graduate. Actually, we could have gotten that done earlier. That didn't cost much. I actually could have gotten the trap stuff up. I just forgot where this engineering graduate was. I thought it was a book I had to find. My bad. Cooking oil, sausage, and dough. 420. Let's hold off on that. 
That gets us upgraded ballista, trap mods. Nope, don't need any of that. There is the handmade submachine gun. But you need a mechanical equipment workbench, and I think we're locked out of that currently. Wouldn't mind the spear or the machete, though. Those we could do. 50, huh? Let's go ahead and do it. Combat bonuses. Damage and attack speed. Sure. Got to have the graduation thesis. We have, I think, this one. Yeah, we have that one, the Art of War. Fifty eight. All right, we're going to be running low. Don't need the sell stuff. 111 left. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of use out of kicking. It's funny when we would kick and get the environmental effects. Hmm. Ouch. I think that's it. A lot of good upgrades there, though. How to get books? First, some areas might just have specific books lying around. Another method is to sift through bookshelves. Check out the book you want, and if you thoroughly inspect the bookshelves in areas where that book is common. Or you can directly purchase it from a kiosk. Three iron ingots, huh? Wow. Did we get lucky on that, or do you always get that level to start? Okay, um, Still tier one common. I'm debating between uh, trying to upgrade the pipe, which uh, we don't have a lot of parts for. I need to get back to harvesting iron again. Tape we can make now, I believe. Yeah. Takes rubber. 
which takes rubber resin, which I think we get from trees. Eh, all right, that'll take a while. So now I have to think. Um, the second night's horde was definitely harder than the first night's, but we were able to set up the pendulum and the spike traps and it pretty much took care of everything pretty easily. And it should be go even easier now that I know how to reset them. Um, not sure the kick thing would work if I put more spikes along the sides and prevented that little hook around that they kept doing. That's why I set these down, but they were able to just walk through this one spot. So if I had loaded up like another spike here and another one here, that would have been better than I think stacking up these out here. So we could maybe get away with another kick attack one, but um, yes. the number of big enemies and the spitters is going to increase. I have to think about that. The other thing I have to think about is we're supposed to be going up to the hospital now. And they kind of, from my limited research I did uh, last night and this morning, the quest chain kind of sends you from the lab here to the hospital and then kind of curves up and out this direction. And following it is going to get you the unlocks for the wrench and some of the other enhancements. Um... And the map is very large. The map is very large. So there's kind of a central grasslands area. And then there's a crossed a bridge way over here. There's a winter area and there's a desert area in the southeast. And then there's extra grassland areas um, and a couple other spots. But it, it goes and it's big. <laughs> Lots of places you could build permanent bases and then just travel around, especially once you get vehicles. I don't know how far in you have to get to get to the vehicles. That's one of the main things I need to learn is uh, when vehicles come into play. But I need to make a decision on do I keep building up here or do I just go immediately for the hospital and maybe try to complete this central grasslands area quest chain. Um, so we've already gotten so much stuff accumulated. I'm hesitant to uh, knock it down. I don't care about any of that. That I don't care. Uh, I could knock all that down easily and move. But the rest of this, we don't have the storage space to transfer most of the stuff. The workbenches would break down into general parts. <laughs> Honked at me on your way out, did you? You can build pretty much anywhere. So inside buildings probably wouldn't be a good idea, but um, the the flat roofs of a number of buildings would be good. The thing is, you have to be able to kill the horde, and the horde can't knock down normal buildings. They can knock down your stuff if they can't get to you. So the way the horde works is they always know where you're at when it's nighttime and they spawn. There's going to be 200 of them. There's a particular mix of light, medium, and or light, big, and giant versions. We're not going to see giants for a while, but there's a percentage mix of the different strengths. And they're just going to keep trying to come after you. So if you set up on top of a building, for example, and there's no access to you, they're just going to wait. They're just going to sit. They're gonna, you're going to have 200 zombies waiting for you to come down in the morning. <laughs> so you'll be safe. But you still got to be able to get rid of the zombies. So you need to make sure you don't just squat on top of a roof because it'll be almost impossible to survive coming back down again. Um, so you want to set up some kind of a killing area. It doesn't mean you can't set up on a roof and have a killing trap maze down below and do a combo of an existing building plus some structures you put up. But yeah, I mean, do what you want. Which is good. I mean, that's all really good. So there are particular areas where there's certain buildings that have really big flat roofs you can use. There are areas where there's flat ground like this in a pretty big area where you can set up a huge base. And the gameplay progression goes from this kind of super early stuff to later having gigantic walled metal fortresses with uh, rocket launcher barrages firing and huge flamethrowers laying down swaths of flaming death and trebuchets lobbing boulders and uh 
kind of Tesla like coil stomping things that spray out energy in a, in a radius and just all sorts of crazy stuff. So, and to power all of that, you have to have huge arrays of, of solar panels and windmills and what, I don't know what, what else generates energy, but, uh, you gotta have battery banks and just all sorts of stuff. So it gets really complex as you progress. That's kind of one of the things I'm kind of impressed about is just how far it goes in the gameplay progression systems, plus the character build systems with the ability to spread your stats around, plus pick different coil configurations based on the gear that you're wearing. Um, so right now, I mean, we're getting in the middle of that info screen, it says the coil quantities that we're getting, and it could be different. I could have three tier two superior leather helmets, and they'd all have different coil quantities um which unlocks these various things which is generating the fire and the electric lightning damage and so on that i'm getting while i'm fighting um plus other stuff lots of other stuff so that's where it's pretty cool plus you can automate a lot of stuff later so you can have mining machines and farming and a whole bunch of other things that are all automated so you don't have to deal with the uh the, the mundane stuff eventually and multiplayer this would be a hoot multiplayer. Let's see if I can talk some folks into joining me for a community game. Be a lot of fun to have a huge horde, dial up the hordes to like 800 instead of 200 zombies and have four people or however many people trying to fight off the nightly hordes and cool base configurations and all that. Assuming the, uh, the system and the server can handle it as long as performance isn't a problem. One of the problems we have with Seven Days to Die is uh, the difficulty I wanted to play on and the settings I wanted to have, it would inevitably end in a choking, slowing down, laggy death <laughs> for the server. So, <coughs> uh, don't know if this game has that problem yet. We'll find out. All right, let's, uh, let's make a save. Uh, let's do N2. New game to save. And I think I'm going to stop right there for the moment. That's a good solid coming up on four hours. How long has it been? Uh, three hours, 20 minutes. That's right. Because day one was started to hour 10. So it's not quite four hours, uh, but that's a good stopping point before I make some decisions on what I want to do. Um, plus you got all the, uh, You got all the uh, the difficulty settings that you can play around with when you hit custom. All these different dials and switches to make the game as difficult as you would like or as easy as you would like. So I really like all that. And you can change it on the fly. So cool stuff. The more I play it, the more impressed I am. All right. Uh, I'm out for now. I'm going to go uh, get some lunch and do a few things around the house. And uh, I'll probably be back uh, a little later. What time is it? Coming up on noon my time. Uh, it take me a few hours, and then I need to con make him into getting the game and showing him how to play it so we can, uh, <laughs> we can do some multiplayer. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I um, hope you're enjoying the new game. New, new for me, at least. I know it's been around for a little while. Uh, we'll keep plugging away at it and getting to some new stuff instead of redoing the start over and over and over again. But we're getting faster at it now that I know what's going on. And I'll have to seriously consider that um, that difficulty upgrade. That was massively different. So different. And that's there's still two difficulty levels above the one I picked. We went from normal, skipped one, went to survival. And it, I mean, like 30 arrows to the face and standard low level zombies are still running at me. <laughs> that That's too bullet spongy for my liking. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever move to a difficulty where it's that bullet spongy or arrow spongy in this case. It just takes the fun out when you see this thing running at you with 15 arrows sticking out of its face. Um, I mean, maybe if you know the exact progression and can get to guns faster, it becomes less of an issue. Maybe, but it just seems ridiculous. And like I said, there's still two difficulty levels above the survivor one that I picked. So I can't even imagine uh, just how long even a single fight takes, which is just not really conducive. I, I don't find that kind of thing fun. Uh, I have a very commonly given speech in the difference between difficulty and tedium. <laughs> so... Yes, things having more hit points technically is difficulty, but it's not as much harder past a certain point than it is just tedious. 
uh, which I don't enjoy. So trying to find that middle ground where I, I feel challenged without having ridiculously long drawn out fights, uh, is the tricky part. So, all right, I'm out of here. I will uh, see you back in a, a few hours. Stay safe out there.